Three, two, one, go. So it's kind of funny. I was just practicing like, you know, like a turtle shell. Because uh, I was sketching some Ninja Turtles. And I noticed when I was on here that this boolean. And I was like, I was like, what is that? Like, I've never seen that before. Let's try it. So I'm just going to you know, join these two. So I'll join the shell and I'm going to add a cylinder and let's just like punch a hole through it. Let's see how it works. Okay, so we'll make a boolean through the shell. I guess we can validate it. So uh, I'm not sure how it works. So let's see what Boolean does. Do we do it the same way? You know, I actually don't even see, I don't see voxel, oh, oh, voxel remesh is there. Okay, so if we do Boolean, maybe, maybe that's it. It feels like the same thing I did before. Voxel remesh. Okay, so that seems the same. Okay, merge, subtract, or intersect objects by performing a Boolean operation. The operation can fail if some objects are not manifold or not watertight. If the Boolean fails, you can always use the voxel remesher on the problematic object to ensure it's a watertight manifold. All right, um, so Boolean, Boolean. Oh, that's interesting. That looked a lot cleaner. <clears throat> Excuse me, so what happens if I don't, what happens if I just press Boolean? Okay, nothing happens. Oh, it like merged them, kind of, right? Subtraction, hide object, intersection, all options, all objects hidden. Well, I don't even know what that means. Oh, so then it just takes the middle part. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Useful. So it just took the middle. It just um, took everything else away except for the points in which these two were touching. So it only had that middle part. Very interesting. Oh, that's going to be useful because there were situations where if I make like an eye socket or something or like a mouth and it's ha I have it open and I want to you know later on like maybe put something in there and if you try to voxel remesh sometimes like the the normal would get flipped Ugh, let me just show you what I mean uh, let me just delete these although I like that shell I think it came out all right so if I had if I have so I have this sphere here and I validate it, and I want to make like a mouth, so to speak. So I'll use the mask. And let's say, oh, we got to, let's voxel remesh this thing. So I want to make a mouth. Easy peasy. Because I've actually had this happen like very recently. So you make a mouth and then you uh, invert the mask and you use your also if you if you ever doing this and the whole thing moves and it doesn't move like this you have to change this because I was troubleshooting someone on, on YouTube before I uh, had a problem with that so I went to object and the whole thing moved and I went to group and the whole thing moved so if you're trying to do that you have to do auto or vertex maybe auto is vertex I don't know but anyway so because I've had a couple things where like I'm making a mouth and then I'm like I'm like okay that's pretty good so then I take the mask off of it 
and smooth it so it's a little bit more mouthy. And then maybe I wanna like have like a, a different color in the back. Instead of like having to paint it and then paint inside there, I just want like a section. And of course there's a couple ways to do it, but I'm always like, well, I just want to maybe do another sphere to make it wide and flat and tall and just like, you know, just like cut that piece out, you know? And the problem is, if I try to do that, so let's just say, I, let's just trim off this. This is getting, this is getting a little crazy. So I'm just gonna use trim and trim off the edges that I don't need. So let's say I just want this piece. I don't want all this. I just want that little piece. So this was what I was doing before. I would take the sphere, clone it, and then take both of these and subtract the sphere from this mouth piece and then voxel remesh them and that's what would happen it would get flipped i changed my color to green so this means that what you're seeing is the actual inside of the mesh so that's what i was that's what i i had so many problems with that so i think i should be able to um let's see how i would do this get rid of this extra sphere I feel like I should be able to do this now so okay so there's a pool um, hmm so maybe I clone this sphere I'm just gonna hide the original one I always do that just so I have like a backup so I have a big sphere let's just name this big sphere or big spur and this is the baby spear. Okay, so now if I have big spear and baby spear, and I hide that one, so this should trim all this. But like we saw before, if I just do it like this, it flips the normals. I think that's the terminology. It turns it inside out. So I should be able to go to Boolean and then Finally, that's so much better. That's so much better. Hopefully that makes sense because that, that was actually bugging me before. Because a lot of times I do things with eyes and then I when I print them, I'm like, I wish I could just print something that could like go in there. But now I can, I can bring back the one that we hid. You know, so then I have this. So if I'm printing something, then I can just like print it and it's, and it's in there. And I, I was having such big issues with that before so this is very helpful uh, I'm not sure what else is new let's take a look really quick so uh, do I have no mint sculpt open no, I don't think I do so let's take a quick look and just see what my guy Stefan Stefan I'm not sure how to pronounce his name correctly uh, forum maybe Let's try forum. Bug report features help. Okay, change log. Maybe this is it. Aren't we? Oh, we're on 179. Okay, so some twist stuff. Boolean. Okay, nice. Curve, improve curve fitting algorithm to generate less points. Oh, that's been something that I've been wondering about too. Because sometimes, let's just get rid of these. I don't actually, when I use the tube tool, I don't use curve. Because anytime, anytime you curve something, it's just like, it's just too many damn curves. Okay, that's much better. It used to be like a million curves, and then I'd have to go and like get rid of a bunch of them. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's do, let's just do a random shape. 
It's we're spline. Oh, they're spline. Now it's called B spline. What's up with that? I don't know the difference. Well, anyway, there should be there's something different different about the twist. See if I notice anything different. Not really sure. Oh, the twist. Oh, yeah, I know this just stays there. Maybe that's it. Not too sure, but there's something different about the twist. Uh, let's see. Post subdivision. Let's make it a little prettier. I wonder if you can do the whole four thing. Where you bring this down. You bring this subdivision down and they, get, they become round. Oh yeah, five is like... Seven is seven is good. So I'll validate that. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice nice shape. All right, let's see what else we got. Snap use scene pivot only if the scene scene. Use scene pivot only if the scene scene is visible on screen. All right, all right, Steph. Now now you're hitting me with some riddles. Use scene pivot, snap, use scene pivot only if the scene scene is visible on screen. Okay, so front, I don't know. That's working. I mean, maybe that's the scene pivot. I, I, I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. Uh, oh, oh, the grid. Oh, the grid is still here. The stupid grid thing. Maybe there's like an option now. Uh, I wish there would be an option that if you're using the grid and you're in orthographic, no, I don't see any options. This silly grid. And you can see the video. It's not, obviously I know how to turn the grid on and off, but I just, I don't want there to be, I want it to be like this when I hit front. That's what I want. So if anyone in the world knows how to turn this back, because uh, I was just I was just working on I've, I've been working on stuff. I made a video on Facebook that I snapped something in orthographic. It doesn't matter if it's orthographic or perspective. You snap something, and it's there's no grid. What is it with this grid? Please help anyone. Okay, so let's see what else they have. Uh, where where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, post process add dithering option should be disabled when rendering an image with a lot of flat color and no shading. Okay, dithering. Uh, I mean, let's see. Let's just open something else. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's open this little guy that I worked on yesterday. And let's get rid of this damn grid. Dang grid. So this is one. Of, these are like my little ones that I've saved. So we'll bring it up. Okay, so dithering. Dithering. Okay, what is what is dithering? Let's see. Okay, question. Dither pixels to reduce banding artifacts. Oh. I did have something with some banding. Oh, what was it that had banding? Let me find it. Oh, I think it might have been... Oh, I think it was his ear. This is also a tutorial that's, I feel like, make sure that, oh yeah, this is, ah, it's warm. So when I had post-process on this, there was like a lot of banding in the ear. Oh yeah, it looks a little bit better. Oh, do I have a... I'm not sure where my uh, copy of this image is, but it did have some banding on the ear. Let me just make sure everything is, all the bells and whistles are on. Let's turn it off and see. It still doesn't look as bad. But yeah, I do remember seeing some there. I'm going to turn it back on. Hey, if Steph says it's better, I believe him. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Din Topo, fix crashes when using dynamic topology with connected topology and lock stroke mode. Okay, I, maybe that's something I'll stumble upon. Layer, fix trim 
voxel remeshing duplicating too many layers when filling holes. Okay, render fix incorrect field of view during when rendering with non-screen ratio. Fix incorrect field of view. Huh. I wonder if that's like that bubble thing. Like sometimes when you try to like um, export something. Let's see. So if I try to render this at 4K. Oh no, it still does the bubble thing. So I don't know. I'm not really sure what that what that is. But maybe I'll maybe the may maybe it'll help. But I don't know. Uh, silhouette so view mode now works properly in the mesh is the mesh mesh is transformed silhouette I don't really know what silhouette is I have no idea what that is I remember seeing it where is it uh, I don't even remember where I saw it now Yeah, I don't remember where silhouette is. I don't even remember. I have to turn I have to turn on low power mode. Cause once my iPad starts like doing that, the screen gets darker and brighter. Then I don't know, it's so annoying. The 2001 iPad is, is better, I think I'm gonna have to say. I like the M2 and everything, but it just gets too hot and it starts acting crazy. And it shuts off on me, which is the worst. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what silhouette is. I don't use it. Interface, improve performance when display many resources. Okay, cool. Depth masking, fixed top and bottom area filtering. I never really use depth, depth masking. I don't really know what that is. Project, fix, save as, new automatic renaming. Hmm. Oh, project, project. <laughs> I guess they're the same word, right? Uh, I did have, I've had that happen once where I was trying to save something and I accidentally saved over an older, uh, like a project that I didn't want to uh, change. You know, like when you work on something and you save it, you work on it for like five minutes and you're like, ah, oh, I kind of like this one, but I want to save the old one. So I tried to save it as a new thing. And then I went back and they were both the old thing. But also there's another thing that you should, excuse me, that you should know. When you have uh, projects, like if I was to work on this, this will show an autosave and it will say preview of last autosave. Right now it says manual, but if it doesn't autosave, it'll save the autosave. Even if you come back to it, it'll have the autosave. So you have to open it and you can do discard autosave to go back to like a previous, a previous version. I don't know if any of these will have it. Um, no, they're all showing manual saves. Uh, but I, I think it's something like that. But I just know that, just check this. Because a lot of times it'll autosave. And um, if you don't want it to, then you have to discard the autosave. And then it'll be like wherever it is that you last manually saved. So I don't know, just keep that in mind. Um, if you need it, it'll make sense. If you ever run into that issue. Okay, so I think that was it. Twist, fix spiral mode. Along the closed tube, fix curve twist gizmo. Fix curve twist gizmo. UI handling being sometimes blocked. Okay, cool. Well, we checked out the curve, and it worked. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's about it. Um, what's some fun things I can add? Oh, this. So this room I opened in Blender. See, this, sh I feel like this shouldn't be, let's see. Oh, see, look, preview of the last manual save. But when I opened it, this is the auto save. This is exactly what I was talking about. So like you open it and it seems like it just saved what I had previously worked on. So for example, so if we go to open, you see that this is the new one if it ever opens. See, this is the new one. This is the one that I brought over into Blender. Obviously, I had to prepare it, make sure things are like there's no layers and things like that. But 
this is what I was talking about. So you see the difference. So if I click on this one and I open it, it's showing the last autosave. So this is an autosave. So if I want to go back to show you how it looked when it's lit in Nomad, I have to discard the autosave. And then I have to open it again. And then it opens as it's supposed to open. So this is the manual, the last manual save. So it's a little tricky and it's easier to, it's easy to overwrite something. So I'm actually glad, hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's just something to be aware of because I have overridden stuff that I didn't intend to because I didn't realize the project was opening an auto save and not the manual save. So but yeah, but I'll show you this. Do I have, I don't think I have any images of that yet. I haven't, I haven't um, rendered it yet on the computer. But anyway, while I'm here, while you guys are here, like we might as well check out some other things I have going on. Oh, another thing that I've been doing. Um, oh, the little robot I redid, actually. So this is like my version. This is like a little bit different than the the Discord version. So I had fun like just remodeling him. Also, I've been doing hands. So uh, yeah, I've been doing hands. I might do a little tutorial on these little cartoon hands just because they're really easy, but I think they're they're kind of fun. So I'm just gonna show you how I do that. And I think I'll end that here because I don't want this to be that long. All right, so that's my little rundown of 1.79 that I stumbled across. Uh, anything else that I see that might be different, I will, um, I'll let you know. I'm trying to think of any other issues that I've had. I don't see anything right off the bat, but Boolean is very cool. Uh, so um, mess around with that, practice with that, and yeah, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Also, FYI, I'm going on vacation, but I have a few tutorials that I'm going to try to schedule, including maybe not this one, but maybe the maybe the hands one. But I have a few tutorials that I'm going to schedule because I'm obsessed. And I want to make sure that I have some content for my YouTube folks. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Did you ever see those really cool 3D sculpts and you're like, how do people make these? You're going to learn today. What's up guys, welcome back to another Udemy course with me, Drug Free Dave, and today we're gonna sculpt Spider-Man. So I've been drawing for over 30 years and I've been doing digital art for about eight years and I've been doing 3D since only 2021. You can learn this stuff really quickly with Nomad Sculpt. So in today's class, you're gonna make Spider-Man step-by-step from a sphere all the way to finish, rendered image. We're gonna be working in Nomad Sculpt. It works on tablets, both iPad, iPad Pro, or Android tablets, and you can create some stunning 3D models right on your tablet. So what you learn in this class is how to use basic shapes, primitive shapes, to build the structure of our character, of Spider-Man. And then we're gonna go through voxel merging and bringing things together. We're gonna group things so we can move him and pose him. Hands, we're gonna do the Spider-Man paint. So you're gonna learn all of this in class. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step so you'll be able to follow along pretty easily as long as you have a basic understanding of Nomad Sculpt. But this is a longer class this is a little bit more of an advanced class so make sure that you take one of my beginners class before you jump right into this one I had a lot of fun sculpting this character and I know you will too so let's get started on our 3d sculpt spider-man 